history is really critical material because history has so much to do with what you believe to be true, what you believe to be false, um, how you understand the Qur'an, how you fail to understand the Qur'an. The Qur'an is historically a mirror, really and truly, but you have to know a lot about history to know that, really and truly. You know, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. The Qur'an requires great knowledge. It requires profound knowledge, especially because the Qur'an never addresses the Bible, for example. What is the Bible? The Bible is a very special and minor part of the legacy of the children of Israel. The Qur'an addresses the whole reality of the children of Israel. And it tells them about the things that they differed about. And most of what is preserved are the things that they differed about mistakenly. And so the Quran will tell us, for example, that Jesus was not crucified. They did not crucify him, they did not kill him. But it was made so to appear, shubbihan. And what was the first thing that the Christians disagreed about? Who knows? Atika, do you know? What was the first thing the Christians disagreed about? This is really important. Because, you know, after the fight and all the broken china, then the victor sweeps out the garbage or puts it under the carpet. So you don't know what really happened. But the first great debate in Christianity was about crucifixion. Was Jesus the Christ or not? Because if he is the Christ, if he is the Messiah, you can't crucify him. That's the definition of Messiah. The Messiah is a victor. T.S. Eliot refers to Christ as the tiger. Christ the tiger. Jesus said, I did not, he said, John baptizes with water. I baptize with fire and the sword. Now that I'm the Messiah. The Messiah is a man of war. And Satan, when he tempts Jesus in the Bible, and he puts him up on the parapets of the temple, he says, cast thyself down. Throw yourself out to the wind. Jump. Because the angels will pick you up. Is that not true? Are you not the Messiah? Because it is written that you will not, you, the Messiah, Shaitan, Shaitan knows who he is, that you will not stumble on a stone, but that the angels will pick you up, because that's the Messiah. You're going to crucify him? Never. You will not. He will be delivered. And in, in traditional belief of the rabbis and the children of Israel, the Messiah cannot be harmed. The Messiah cannot be touched. That's why Paul, who believed that Christ was crucified, he says that the crucifixion is an escandalon. It's a scandal. The Greek word scandalon means a stumbling block. Because who can accept that? No one can accept it. Like, like this is proof that Jesus was not the Christ. <clears throat> if you killed him, that's why the Jews say, we killed uh, the Messiah, the son of Mary. You know, in other words, like he was not the Messiah, you know, because we killed him. And our killing him shows that he couldn't deliver himself. But, uh, you know, St. Jerome says the blood of Christ, whom he believes was crucified, we could say the blood of the crucified one, had not dried in the earth, the soil of Jerusalem, but that there were those who said, it is not him. It is one who looks like him. And in Greek, they use the word dokein. Dokein, which means the same as shubia. Exactly the same. They say shubia. And these were called docetics. D-O-C-E-T-I-C. -E docetics. And many early Christians were docetics. And the Qur'an comes to say that they were right and you were wrong. Sorry, you missed the boat. The Docetics were right, you killed them all. You got rid of them. You know, you, you closed that chapter of history and you know, as if it never was. But this was your first issue. 
Like, is that Jesus? Because like, it's like, they can't crucify him. He is the Messiah. And people say, and it's not him. It looks like him, but look at the lower body. And even in the, in the Gospels, as they are transmitted to us today, the church Gospels, they say that Christ, when he's carrying the cross, stumbles to the ground. And then another man has to come and pick up the cross and carry it for him as a mercy to him. And this is not Jesus Christ. Because the Messiah is strong. And the prophets and the messengers are strong. You know, you take the strongest wrestler in Arabia, and the prophet, who is not a wrestler, suddenly throws him to the ground. And he said, no, no, you have to give me another chance. You did something that was, does it again. Does it again? And he said, I should have done that. You know, that this is, you know, like, this is not normal. This is not usual. The prophet is very strong because the prophets and the messengers were the most perfect of all human beings. They were the most intelligent. And they were also physically strong. And Jesus was like that too. So who is this man who's stumbling? Is he, this is an ordinary human being. And they say he looks like Jesus in the upper body, but he looks different in the lower body. These things are really important. And if you look up at Docetic in the internet, I think you might be discouraged. If you want to look at a good uh, article on Docetism, then you could look at the Encyclopedia of Religion and Ethics. And I think you can look at the article of Docetism. And, uh, and he will show you that Docetic, for example, the Christians know today, uh, maybe they've heard some of us talk, <laughs> you know, the Christians always are trying to cover their weak spots. But, you know, they, they, so they will present docetism to you as if this is just a Gnostic idea that some early Christians had. No, docetism was never identified with any sect, not the Gnostics or anybody else. Although all the Gnostics of Christianity were docetic, except for maybe one, you know, but it was not a sectarian view. It was an early Christian view, docetism. And... Um, you know, uh, all of the Apocrypha, all of the books that are not canonical books of the Bible, you know, that are not accepted by the Jews, all of the Apocrypha that give what we call the Acts of the Apostles, the Acts of the Disciples of Christ, they're all docetic, except for one. For example, the Acts of John, John is sitting on Mount Olives, the Mount of Olives, and he's looking at uh, Calvary, where the crucifixion took place, and he is he is depressed. He's crying, as I, I believe it says. And then it says Jesus comes to him on the mountain, and he says, "John, I'm Jesus. This is this is I." And that's someone else that they crucified. Uh, very very interesting. So I mean, the Quran is really amazing, really amazing. We could we could talk about many aspects of that.